I'm going to go through an example of calculating the RMS uncertainty for an operator. In this case, I'm going to use my X, uh, spin and X operator, and I'm going to be using a state which is spin up in Z. And let's do this in matrix notation, though you could imagine trying to do this in, in bracket notation. So in matrix notation, we have one zero. We're working in the Z basis. So this is the definition, right? This is the equation that's going to define what our uncertainty is for an operator. And we're talking here about this spin X operator. So we have an expectation value. And what I would recommend as a starting point is to calculate what this operator is. And so if I want to calculate what SX squared is, that's just taking my operator and multiplying it by itself. Not that bad. Oops, except I made a mistake. One zero. And then h bar over 2, 0, 1, 1, 0. OK. So we have h bar over 2 squared. And then we're going to get a 2 by 2 matrix. So row times column, 0, 1 times 0, 1 gives me 1. 0, 1 times 1, 0 gives me 0. 1, 0 times 0, 1 gives me 0. 1, 0 times 1, 0 gives me 1. And actually, when we calculated the, um, the s squared operator, so that, that three-dimensional um, spin operator, we already actually did this calculation and got this already. So this is something we've done before. OK, so we have that. And so now we can calculate out each of these terms and then plug them in. So what you're actually going to have here is a scalar minus a scalar. So I think it's nice to, to just do it out first. So our expectation value here has to take a specific state. The state we're going to use here is spin up in Z it would be a more interesting calculation to use a different state, but let's do that for now. So when I have this object, which is the same as this, we're going to write this in matrix notation. So I have my bra here. So 1, 0, I need to transpose it and take the complex conjugate, which is still just 1, 0. And now I have this new um, element here. So I'm actually going to, and this is where the notation gets a little bit tricky, Right, that's not a, a vector or anything, that's just a scalar that will pop over to the left later. And then 1, 0, 0, 1. And then again, my state now is a column, 1, 0. So let's pull out that scalar, which again, if you're not careful about your notation, this gets confusing. And we have to, we do valid matrix math. We can't just rearrange things. Um, so let's first multiply these objects together. And so I'm going to leave this bra sitting out here. And so now I'm going to create a new object here. So row, column, row, column is going to give me a new column vector. And I can multiply this row vector by a column vector to get a scalar. So row, column, 1 times 1 plus 0 times 0 is 1. Uh, 0 times 1 plus 1 times 0 is 0. And it makes sense that the identity matrix is equivalent to 1. So multiplying the identity matrix times this would give me back this. So that's fine. So now, row times column, this gives me a scalar. It gives me a scalar of 1. So this is just equal to h bar over 2 squared times 1. OK, nice. Now we go to the second term. And this is the expectation value squared. So first, let's find the expectation value. Again, I really encourage you, as you're new to this, to write out every step rather than trying to take shortcuts or do it in your head. And so we have 1, 0. And now just the operator itself. So h bar over 2, 0, 1, 1, 0. And then my ket state, which is 1, 0. So again, I'm going to bring that scalar out front. I'll do the matrix times the ket first, which will give me a new ket state. So row times column, 0 times 1 plus 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 1 plus 0 times 0 is 1. So again. I now just have a, a row times a column. And so 1 times 0 is 0. 0 times 1 is also 0. This actually gives me times 0. So this actually equals 0. So when we come up here, we now have two scalars. The first one is already the expectation value. So that is h bar over 2 squared. And now I'm subtracting the expectation value squared. We've seen that the expectation value is 0. If you square 0, you still have 0. Now, if you're a little bit uncomfortable with the expectation value being 0, well, we can actually just think about what is the average spin value in x. 
Now, we actually here have gotten spin up in z, but we, if you've done the measurement or the calculation enough by now, you know that when you take a state which is spin up in z and measure the spin in x, it's 50% down, 50% up. When you average that, you get zero. So this makes sense. So now when we take the square root of this, we are just going to get h bar over two. Now, one thing you want to be careful about is that oftentimes in this class, especially when calculating eigenvalues, when you take the square root of a number, remember that it's going to give you two values. So you might say, ah, is this plus or minus? Well, this is an uncertainty, so we can just use the, the positive value, right? This is basically saying, what is its width? And a width would be a positive number. So we get a value here. And you can go through and you can redo the calculation to find the uncertainty in y, you can find the uncertainty in z, and you could then go through and check and make sure that this actually satisfies our Heisenberg uncertainty principle where we're now relating the uncertainties, that, like what we just calculated, this RMS deviation, to the commutation between these operators. So I, I hope that this has helped explain the process.